Living My Best Life, published on June 23rd, 2023. I started this article as 2022 was coming to a close and I was reflecting on all that has transpired and what is presently at hand. I only now feel ready to publish it though, as it has been a pretty intense six months of 2023 already. I was reflecting on 2022. I had the following questions and answers, and I find myself asking them again now in June of 2023. Has this been the best year for me? No, absolutely not. Has my life changed for the better this year? Absolutely it has. This acknowledgement led me to the realization that I was and still am living my best life right now, and I'm celebrating it with immense gratitude. As a result of my medical PTSD, I've struggled with periodic bouts of depression and intense anger with a longing for death that I've experienced since my first surgery at age nine. It didn't help in high school during one of my near-death experiences that I was overcome with the deepest sense of peace I've ever encountered. This peace has left me longing for death even more ever since. So joy wasn't something I regularly experienced or even thought about, much less saw it. To me, life has merely been a waiting period full of suffering. This isn't to say that I've lived an unhappy life. Rather, it's often a life overshadowed by fear, fears of losing my parents or other loved ones, fear of uncertainty, fear of emotional and physical pain, fear of the past repeating itself. 2021 forced me to dedicate 2022 to focusing on my mental health, learning self-care and allowing self-growth. I started 2021 with emotional turmoil from reliving my own medical traumas while writing my own medical story and my children's book about FAP for publication. This was an intense, emotionally exhaustive and long process, much more than I had anticipated. I ended the year with my eighth abdominal surgery and new unexplained debilitating chronic pain that would take over six months for a diagnosis of abdominal migraine. I also was diagnosed with fibromyalgia around this time, a new diagnosis for me that I haven't even given any thought to until recently. I began 2022 with resuming antidepressant medication and counseling. Shortly after, within the span of a month, two of my family members who had helped raise me passed away. Not long after that, another family member who had helped raise me moved two and a half hours away. She was no longer physically close to me in proximity, and it was as though I was losing her too, as I was losing those that my childhood life was so firmly founded upon. I was taken back to the loss of previous family members in the early 2000s that shook me to my core. In 2022, I added metaphysical courses and EMDR therapy for trauma work to my cognitive behavioral therapy. While life significantly improved upon appropriately managing the pain of abdominal migraine, the end of 2022 wasn't easy either. I started experiencing regular vomiting with the reason only just being determined in May of 2023 as that of esophageal dysmotility. I lost another family member and am preparing for the loss of yet another family member. In my trauma work to process not only my past trauma, but also my future fears is extremely emotionally difficult to work. And yet, I'm at a place in my life that I can't deny is the happiest time of my life. I'm cherishing every moment with my parents. I have built a family and life with my life partner, his son, and family. I've regained my quality of life after enduring a year of debilitating pain. I'm learning and practicing self-care and healing from a past trauma. I'm maintaining employment, serving in new advocacy roles for the cancer and rare disease communities, and celebrated the 10th anniversary of Life's Apollo. In 2021, I attended my first Reiki session and was confronted by my lack of experiencing joy with the challenge to start finding joy. Through all of the hard work I'm doing for my self-care, self-healing, and self-growth, I can finally say that I do experience moments of joy now in life, and they are absolutely wonderful, and I want more of them. I want them so much so that I often am faced with moments of fear and anxiety to hold on to those moments as they're overshadowed at times by my fear of never having them again. This is becoming a lessening concern though as I am incredibly doing well maintaining self-care after a year of trial and error with how to maintain self-care practices. I'm also relieved and grateful to finally know the reason for my unexplained chronic vomiting after nearly a year of this issue only worsening and learning what my treatment options will be for it. 
it is something that I've really been struggling with since July of 2022. It was only worsening and taking a heavier and heavier mental toll. With my esophageal dysmotility, I am faced with very limited options for treatment, a muscle relaxer or surgery, both of which my doctor doesn't like. Fortunately, I previously took baclofen in 2014 following developing a bulging disc in my neck and didn't experience any side effects from the medication. My doctor agreed to allow me to trial it for my vomiting and so far, as long as I tie my doses right and don't overeat, I'm able to keep food and drink down. I've decided to not pursue surgery for two reasons. Not only because medication is working, but also my doctor confirmed I, I have another stricture on my small intestine. And as he reminded me, no one really wants to do surgery on me due to my long history of surgeries and excessive adhesions. I fully anticipate in the future it is likely that I will require surgery for the Whipple procedure in order to remove the, the adhesions creating my stricture. I'd much rather at this point trade a surgery for esophageal dysmotility for one or both of these possibly needed surgeries in the future. There comes a point when a person becomes inoperable. And I don't want to hasten that time for myself any more than what's absolutely necessary. The mental toll I've been under this year has al also been compounding by developing post-concussion syndrome following a fall in February of 2023. This is a subject I will explore in a future post, but do not presently feel comfortable publicly sharing the full details of what life has been like with PCS at this time, except that PCS has been an extremely challenging and nightmarish experience that no one has been able to truly understand how it's affected me except for my partner, Mike. And that has also been a challenge as it has led me to feel isolated, misunderstood, and dismissed by the majority of people in my life because they don't see or grasp what it's like to have a brain injury that isn't healing at an expected or wanted rate. My brain is still healing with slow improvements, which is something I am extremely grateful and relieved about and hope that when my brain fully heals that I won't have lifelong complications from the injury. It's difficult, a difficult process to accept when life changes with no guarantee or even signs of improvement to return to how life was previously. In spite of a multitude of changes occurring in the last two years with barely any time to adjust to one change before another rises, I can confidently say that presently I am living my best, li my best life and even though there are no cures for my conditions, I'm full of gratitude for where I'm at in my life, and I eagerly anticipate a world of wonderful things to continue as time goes on.